Hi, I'm Jason Leahy, Executive Director of the Illinois Principals Association, and thanks for joining us for this edition of IPA Talk. And really excited about who I've got here with me today, President and CEO of Horace Mann, one of our, our truly best partners here at the IPA, Marita Zaraitis, thanks for joining me. Hi, Jason, uh, it's, good it's to a be real here. pleasure, you bet. Thanks. So uh, I've got a few things I want to talk about, Marita, but first, I uh, you know you've been at Horseman since, what, about 2013 yeah, or so? Yeah, about four years, yeah. Yeah, so mind sharing a little bit about your background and what, what finally brought you to the Horseman position? Not at all, I'm an insurance rat. I've been in the insurance business for my entire career. Most recently, I was the president of the Hanover Insurance Company up in Massachusetts and was recruited here to be the CEO of Horace Mann and it's been uh, quite an exciting ride since I got here. Yeah, well that's great. So let's talk a little bit about just, you know, being a CEO, being the president there at, at Horace Mann, what that's like, um, you know, obviously being a leader of a large organization, you're probably thinking about leadership a lot and, you know, what it takes to, to lead an outfit like that. So. For you, Marita, when you when you think about uh, you know running Horseman effectively, what's what's most critical for you in your position? You know, I think as a leader, you have to be passionate about what you do. You have to believe in what you're doing. And when I was recruited to come here to Springfield to run Horseman, I, I come from a family of educators. Um, I believe in education deeply. Um, my parents had seven kids, and although my mom was a nurse and my father was a plasterer, they said all seven kids were gonna go all the way through college, even though it was probably hard for them um, to afford it, and really distilled in us from the very beginning the importance of a strong educational background. And, and I think that's probably why so many of my siblings and nieces and nephews are educators. So when the board came to me and, and asked me to run Horace Mann, the idea of running a company that's built, founded by educators, for educators, and all about understanding the issues facing educators and solving them, it was exciting. So I think it starts with passion and believing in what you're doing. And then as a leader, I think you have to make the strategy clear and set very definitive goals and really make sure that every employee from you know my direct reports all the way down to the people sitting in the lobby greeting people when they walk in the door, understanding the strategy, the mission, the vision of the organization, our goals, and most importantly, how they connect to it. Because I have a basic belief that people get up in the morning and they want to do a good job and they want to be fulfilled. I don't know too many people who woke up, wake up in the morning and say, I want to screw up today. <laughs> you know, So <laughs> right. I think you get most out of people when they understand um, you know, what the goals are, that you set some key metrics, you measure it, um, and hold them accountable for it. And I think if they believe in what they're doing and they understand what the goals are, then they have a better chance at being successful. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Now, one of the things I, uh, I wonder about, Rita, you know, because in an organization like IPA, we've got over 5,300 members now in the association, and they're spread out here throughout the state. And I'm very concerned about how we make sure we stay connected you know, personally to, right. to each of those members. Uh, so, you know, Horace Mann's a national company. You've got agents all over the place. You know, when you're thinking about your role, you know, and you're here in Springfield and you've got people all over the place, you know, what's important to you or, or what are some things that you try to do to, to stay connected, you know, with, with the full team of Horace Mann? Because right. I know I that's not it, yeah. easy. I think it's a great question. And I'd say, you know, it's never going to be perfect. Right. And you're never going to get everybody 100% of the time. But I do think asking the question and trying is probably the key. I have, you know, I, I make it um, my mission to communicate, communicate, communicate. When you think it's enough, do more. Mm -hmm. um, because you can never do enough as many times as you think you've said it. Uh, I, I do think going- My wife shares that with me too, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> going back and thinking about the strategy and making it digestible. Um, and, you know, just thinking about the Horace Mann strategy, it's really always been about understand the fi issues facing educators and solving them and really using the same language when you communicate around that. I do coffees with Marita. I get together with 20 or 30 employees at all levels of the organization every other Tuesday morning in the cafeteria and we sit down and we have coffee. I'm getting really sick of having coffee with myself. <laughs> um, but we have coffee and I talk about the strategy and I give them you know, the pitch and the goals and just to make sure they're hearing it from me. But then we also have some informal Q&A. What's on their mind? What are they curious about? And it does two things. It's another communication venue, but I also get to hear what they're seeing and what they're feeling in the organization. And that skip level, 
that, you know, call it management by walking around, I think is really important. I think good leaders listen. I think they digest. I don't think they always take what they hear at face value. They confirm. And spending some time with the folks that are actually doing the work is important. So those coffees with Marita, um, I think, are important. I have weekly leadership team meetings, as I'm sure most of your folks do. I, I hold um, O&D meetings, we had one today, officers and directors. So the broader leadership group, um, we do it, it's about 45 minutes once a quarter. We talk about the results of the quarter. Again, we reiterate the mission and fit it in there again. And we hold a Q&A. So it's really that, that transparency and that open dialogue and communication that I think helps us reach folks. It's harder when they're remote. Um, I think having a good website, posting good content on your website, having some interactive blog capabilities where the people remotely um, can do that. When we have management meetings, we will dial in the people remotely so that they can listen and hear it real time. And then occasionally you probably need to bring them in so you get that physical touch. But we, we constantly try to find ways to communicate. We just had a all employee meeting at the Prairie Capital Center. We rented the convention center. We put 1,500 people in a room and we talked about our mission and our vision. We celebrated success. We do our employee of month and employee of the year and have some celebration because I think that's a, an important part of part of it too for people to recognize what good looks like and be thanked, you know, and get some public recognition for it as you well. Bet. Well, and, and in education, they talk about if you don't feed the teachers, they eat the students. So <laughs> that recognition is pretty <laughs> critical. But you gave me an idea, though. I think uh, Java with Jason might be. Might oh, be that's even better than coffee with Maria. I like <laughs> yeah. that. So. Uh, you know, you talk about core values with leadership. I think for me personally, one is that, uh, you know, for leaders to lead effectively, they must lead themselves well first. So, you know, when, when you think about that for yourself, Marina, not to put you on the spot, uh, but just to reflect briefly, you know, when you think about leading yourself, what, what's most important for you, do you think? You know, I, I hadn't really thought about that, but I would say emotional health, yeah. um, physical health, balance. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes you've got to walk away and breathe. Um, sometimes you can't let your emotions get the best of you. I think you have to step back. I think you have to realize that there's a lot of people counting on you to be that thought leader, to be that calm voice. And personally, let's face it, it's not always a great day. You're not always calm about an issue. But I think if you have to step away, take a deep breath, get your composure back, uh, that's probably Time key. Time helps, doesn't I, it? Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't say it's don't ever let them see you sweat. Because sometimes I do think it's important that they see the passion and they do see you sweat and they see you work through um, an issue. But I think, I think a good leader gets calmer the harder the situation is so that folks can actually see that resolution process. Because, you know, a good leader is a solver. You know, people are counting on you to be there to help them solve an issue when they can't necessarily solve it on their own. So I didn't know you were going to ask me that question, so you got Marita off the cuff. Yeah. But I, I do think it's important. And I do think the physical health or the opportunity to step away, that balance, you know, a lot of people call it work-life balance. I'm not that cliche, but I have my outside passions that I think make me stronger in the office because I can step away, show my horse, play with the dogs, be with my husband, enjoy my kids so that when I'm in the office, I'm actually there. You know, so I think that balance is probably really important. Agreed. Well, and, and you know, as we've been studying leadership here in the association and thinking about how do we, how do we support our school leaders out there, we, we're starting to talk more and more about context and about the interplay, uh, you, know, you know, that you have going on personally and how that affects what's going on at home, how that affects what's going on at school and the right. system at large and all of that. Uh, you can't disconnect those because they're all connected inside of you, right. correct? I think that's right. But at, so. wor at work, I think it's important to have purpose. You know, I really think that I come to work every day because I do believe in what I'm doing. I believe that there should be a company helping educators protect what they have today and helping educators have a decent retirement. Because I remember back in the day when my sisters joined the profession, they had a pension that was going to be there at almost 100% when they retired. It's not, it, it, it isn't the reality anymore. So we know teachers enter the profession because they have a calling. We don't want them leaving the profession because right. they're financial concerns, right? right? So if as a big corporation we can solve those financial concerns, then they can keep that calling and stay in the profession, yeah. which is why we work hard 
to offer the programs and the products so that teachers can focus on teachers and we can do what we do to help them focus on you know, focus on teaching. Well, and that's so important because my oldest now is starting to talk about maybe becoming a teacher. And obviously the dad in me, there's two, I have conflicting viewpoints on that. It's like as an educator, I, I think that's so wonderful. But then the dad in me is a bit concerned because it's not right. as it used to be when I entered the profession right. like that. And but so, it can be. Agreed, agreed with, with organizations such as yourself. We can solve together. Like that. You bet, absolutely. absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what's going on with Horseman right now, Marita. Uh, you guys have been terrific partners of ours. We sure appreciate that, uh, supporting our Principal of the Year program, which, by the way, we're going to announce publicly the winners of this year's uh, Principal of the Year program. And I know your agents have been out surprising the winners. We've, we've added that now as a new element, uh, kind of to give people a picture. It's kind of like Publisher's Clearinghouse. We don't have a big check, per se, <laughs> but we do have a cake, so that, that helps. But the recognition uh, feels oh, good, I'm oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. And we'll do more with that uh, at our fall conference in October. But, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about loan forgiveness and other things like right. that uh, and, and retirement planning. But anything specific with Horseman that, that's happening right now that you wouldn't mind highlighting? Not at all. I mean, a lot of discussion around why teachers aren't as prepared as they should be for their retirement. And I don't believe it's because teachers don't understand that they need to or they should. We really believe as a company that teachers don't have the disposable income necessary to do that planning. So rather than sitting down with an educator and saying you really should have life insurance or guess what, you're not putting enough away, we, we got to the bottom of the data and we quickly discovered that it was because teachers didn't have the funds. So we made it our, our, our mission to help educators find the money that they could put to work for themselves because we know that educators are smart. We know that they get it. They just don't have a lot of choices. So all the solutions were rooted in that, in that concept. So when you think about student loan solutions, that came out of understanding how much student loan debt was in the educator space and working really hard to make sure educators were aware of the student loan forgiveness programs that already exist, but even those weren't sufficient. So joining forces with a financial institution on student loan refi, that between the forgiveness and the refi, we could help educators find those funds and then put it to work in a 403B or some other retirement vehicle. Everything we do, the donors choose work, um, the state retirement planning sessions are all around finding dollars that you know educators aren't aware that could be there for them and then helping them put it to work you know as opposed to taking out the wheel and saying hey if you put 20 bucks away you know do you know what it would be worth so it's a different approach and it's worked very well for us and we see it in the numbers in the amount of loans that we've forgiven in the amount of increases um, in pensions in the amount of uh, life insurance that people are purchasing, we feel like we're really making a difference Absolutely. in the educator space, so it's working yeah. out well. And all of those things that you mentioned, you know, we talk a lot about retirement planning, but insurance, making sure you have quality life insurance and those things. Right. You know, as a dad of five children, that's something my wife and I, we talk about a lot, just to right. make sure that if something were to happen to either one of us, you know, we're, we're blessed that my wife has been able to stay home with our kids and, and she's loved doing that, but if something were to happen to me, that obviously we've got to have something to protect her. But even for her, we make sure that we've got her covered because if, if Ashley weren't there to take care of our children, I would have to figure something out, right? right? Even, even as dad here. Uh, but in and, addition and that, to life insurance, I mean, just think about um, discounts on auto insurance sure. because we know teachers are so much better yep. drivers and better risk candidates. I mean, these are people that are teaching kids not to text and drive and not to drink yep. and drive the idea that they're gonna have irresponsible behavior behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. It's just not, mm -hmm. of course there's bad apples in every sure. profession, but these are folks that make it their mission to keep kids safe. They're gonna be safer drivers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they tend to take care of their houses better. Mm -hmm. um, we give combined discounts for homeowners and autos. So all the commercials that you say on TV, you know, saving 15% right. or bundling or snap, you know, your picture of your claim, mm -hmm. we offer all those things but we do it specifically for teachers so we can actually provide a very competitive marketplace 
you know, for teachers, because we don't have all those other rate suckers um, that the other companies talk <laughs> about. Right. We only have the good teachers. Absolutely, you bet. Well, I, I will say having the opportunity to interact with your team, Marita, they're terrific. Uh, it's a good group you know, of people. Well, service oriented, all of that, and sure appreciate that. And, and do appreciate those that are out in the field right now recognizing our principles of the year. So if you don't mind, Not at all. let's go it's ahead exciting. and, and talk about it as you bet. <laughs> I know, so we have four. We, we recognize our high school, middle school, elementary school principles of the year, as well as our assistant principal of the year. So our high school principal of the year this year from Westmont High School in Westmont is Mr. Jack Balderman. Our middle school principal of the year at uh, Henry Cowherd Middle School in Aurora is Crystal England. Elementary School Principal of the Year at Gillespie Elementary School in Chicago is Michelle Willis. And then our Assistant Principal of the Year this year, right down the road in Jacksonville, Illinois, at Jacksonville High School, Mr. Tim Chipman. So congratulations, congratulations to all of these. You bet uh, John Murphy on your staff was a part of the Selection Committee, and so uh, appreciate him being a part of that as well. Uh, these individuals, again, will be recognized at our fall conference this October and, and have several opportunities uh, to be recognized for their outstanding leadership. So. Marita, thanks so much Thank uh, for some, taking some time. Thanks sure for appreciate the opportunity. That. Well, and, and again, just speaking on behalf of all of our members, we appreciate the partnership with the Great. Horseman. Thanks. My name is Jason Leahy, Executive Director of the Illinois Principals Association with the President and CEO of Horseman, Marita Zoraitis. Uh, thanks for joining us for this IPA talk, and if there's anything the association can do for you, never hesitate to call and always check us out on the web at www.ilprinciples. Dot org and we'll plug horseman to horseman.com is that right, uh, slash, right on the web? Slash, slash workshops <laughs> <laughs> right very good very good thanks thank Marie. you appreciate it appreciate it thanks